In this video, we're going to continue retouching the image we've been working on. We just did a hue and saturation adjustment on the layers where uh, we saw, on a separate layer actually, where we saw there was too much red in the skin. Uh, we did that with a targeted adjustment tool and effectively decreased a lot of the redness and the cheeks and the over reddening in the lips. Uh, what I'd like to do now is merge these layers up. So hit Shift, Option, Command, and E if you're on a Mac and that merges these adjustments to the top layer. And from here, we'd like to try and take one more pass at the under eye area and maybe some of the uh, skin issues that are happening in this photo. We've gotten it from uh, here, which was the original, uh, up to here, which is in a much better place and we're nearing the completion of this photograph, but let's see what else we can do. If you come over to your tools palette here, you can grab the clone stamp tool. When you grab that, Go up to your mode and make sure it's on Lighten. And let's start with about 50% or so. This is a quick way to kind of clean up under the eye a little bit here. Let's zoom in nice and close. Command plus will bring you in a little closer. And you can do this on a separate layer. So once you are on your top merge layer, launch a new layer right here on the bottom, which is an empty layer. And let's uh, make sure that you have the aligned and sample all layers box on and let's move this under the eye pretty quickly and see what kind of cleanup we can do here. I'm just kind of clicking away. Remember I'm at 50% with my opacity and it is effectively kind of cloning and fixing up these areas pretty nicely. Let's see. Okay, so once we do that we can bring it down here by the chin area alongside the mouth. Just some minor adjustments I'm doing here. It does kind of clone things uh, over, but the blend mode is lightened, so it kind of helps a little bit. Let's soften some of that. Great, let's take a look at what that looks like. The uh, eye is off and now it's on. That's a pretty good fix to me. Let's take a look at the forehead area. Maybe we can do something else there. Let's go into some of these areas here and I'm just clicking around and taking care of any other kind of little divots or little raised areas that we didn't catch early on. And that's pretty good from where I'm sitting, that's good. If it looks a little heavy handed, remember you can dial this back with the opacity. You can try something like 85%, take a look before and after, before and after. It looks good to me, it doesn't look too heavy handed. Let's zoom out by hitting Command minus and take a look at where we are. What I'd like to do here is maybe do a little bit of airbrushing on this next layer and uh, specifically in the area of the forehead. I'd like to kind of even this area out but also bring some of this kind of warmish tan uh, into his face. Let's launch a new layer from the bottom to do that and let's get our brush tool. Make sure you have a nice soft brush up. Move your hardness slider all the way to the left and let's see, let's take this a little bit smaller by hitting our left bracket, make a nice small brush. Let's sample some of this area here by hitting Option, Alt on a PC. You see the dropper that shows up. Click once, it'll put that color right here in the top foreground box. Let's set our airbrushing to really low, let's say about maybe 15 or 16%. I have mine at 17%. Um, and let's just move through this area a little bit here just tapping slightly and effectively kind of cutting down the areas that are a little bit too tan. Um, we can also sample some of that color on the side of the face by hitting option right here and let's drag it into the cheeks a little bit. Bring it over here as well in the cheek area. There we go. And what you can do at this point is let's drop this down. Maybe let's keep that adjustment at about uh, let's say about 65% so it stays nice and transparent. That's before, that's after. It doesn't look too airbrushed. What you want to do here is add some blur to this. So go up to your filter menu, go down to blur and add Gaussian blur and let's set that at about uh, 4.5 pixels and just say OK. It just blurs out your adjustment a little bit here and remember you can dial this back if you like to can dial it back to 55% and see what that looks like. Great. Um, let's also add a little bit of noise to this layer as we put it on. So go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise, 
and I'd like to keep it real low. Let's keep it down to about 4.8% or so. Let's type in an even 5% by highlighting that and hitting 5.0 and keep it on uniform and leave monochromatic unchecked and just say OK to that adjustment. It adds a little bit of noise into that as well. Let's take a look nice and close, see if we can see it show up. That's before, that's after. So sometimes people break this move up onto two separate layers, putting their um, Gaussian blur on one layer. Sometimes people put it on the same level, on the same layer rather, uh, just as a kind of a shortcut there. Uh, this picture isn't in bad shape, so we can get away with it here. We might add some more uh, grain or noise later on. But that was an effective way of just kind of using our clone stamp tool to lighten and also using some airbrushing on the skin and dialing that back. I'm going to take it back even further to about 45%. That's our before, that's our after. Let's also right now jump to some toning with this image. I'm going to go ahead and launch a curves layer. We're going to kind of sculpt the face a little bit and add some nice darkening shadows in here and also up here on the temple. Let's drop our curves down real low somewhere in the middle there, kind of gets nice and rich, and let's invert the mask by clicking mask, invert, that blocks our adjustment. Make sure you're painting with white as the foreground color, that is the reveal, and let's get our opacity up to about 50%, and a nice big brush, or bigger than we had, and just do a couple passes in here around the side of the temple, Let me back that out, and another pass down here, add some darkening, and over here on the side as well. Make the brush a little bit smaller. And all I'm doing is increasing a little bit of the shading and shadow. Let's take a look at that. That's the before. There's the after. Now let's do the same thing and add some highlights towards the face. Launch another curves layer. And let's push the curves adjustment up so it's a little bit bright. Hit mask and invert and let's paint in some lighter areas which are generally his nose here a little bit under the eyes and the center of the forehead Let's make a nice soft brush let's drop our opacity down for the highlights to 20 percent I'm just tapping in and around here and again making a small brush run down the center of the nose and a couple of sweeps under the eye should do it adding a little bit of brightening in there let's see there's our before there's our after we'll zoom in a little bit for after a very subtle effect let's dial it back a little bit to 70 percent and it's a subtle way of kind of adding some highlights where they already exist in the face and our layer before that was adding some darkness and shadow where that already exists on the face let's dial that layer back take that to about 65 percent or so and there's our before and after let's back out take a look at where we've come from we're almost done with this photograph we started right around here. Let's go all the way to our bottom layer. Click on the uh, bottom most layer, hold on option. That's our before, that's our after. Again, there's our before and there's our after. So we brought this photo to a much better place. Um, let's also take a look at the sky and how we can fix that in the next tutorial.